<laughs> hey, how are you? Good hey, I'm you awesome. Again. I'm doing great. <laughs> All right, we're doing another episode. Yes, sir. What are we talk about? Yeah, so uh, we talked about this a couple of weeks ago where, um, you know, when we do demos, when, whenever I sit in with you and, and uh, we do a demo for a potential client, you will always start with the experience of the rep. And I'm, we're kind of talking about why why do you start there? What's the benefit of, of uh, potential clients? Why should they be thinking about what their rep is going through um, in the process of being onboarded and trained? Uh, yeah, why do you start there? Yeah, so I do this on purpose. I do this deliberately because I want to uh, make a point that the reps experience, right, is the show. Um, they're the uh, they're in the audience. They're looking at the show, um, and then everything else is backstage. And really, the backstage could be set up in a completely weird way. Your, mm -hmm. your stage hands and all could be set up in a totally weird way. But if it's getting the right result, what what does it matter, right? And yeah. sometimes companies optimize the opposite. So. It, they all want to make the great rep experience, but they're really optimizing their departments, right? And so they're setting up, uh, they're setting up their folders for how they create their content in a certain way that's optimizing for creating content, mm -hmm. regardless of how experience, how the rep experience is at, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's just, it's just, I'm trying to emphasize the fact that the rep experience is paramount because who cares about like reporting if there ain't nobody taking the course, right? Or finishing yeah. the training. Right? Yeah. Um, and it's easy to kind of get bass backwards a little bit with that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So um, the challenge, the big challenge for companies is this constraint. The, con the biggest constraint I see in a lot of companies, especially in, in opportunity based companies, right. Where the, they're offering an opportunity to a rep that is in an independent contractor. It's not a, a, a W2 employee. Mm -hmm. The biggest constraint they have is the attention span of that person. The yeah. how much attention do they have of that person? They need to treat those people, the, the people that they're trying to recruit or train more like consumers who want a great consumer experience, which we'll talk about more. Mm -hmm. um, and if you really realize there's a budget for how much attention you have, and if you're not filling that bucket back up, you can spend it really easily. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's a very finite resource. Mm -hmm. So again, it's really, the stakes are really high uh, for the types of companies we work with, especially yeah. when they have large independent sales forces that can nope out at any time in the, in the process, whether that be a recruiting or training process. Yeah. Um, so companies aren't, they'll, they'll optimize for each individual um, section of the business. So they'll optimize for recruiting. Okay. Then they'll optimize for onboarding. They'll optimize for training. Mm -hmm. and they'll optimize for like engagement but usually as the company gets bigger they start to uh silo those so they break them up right so early on you know it's like the same guy doing the same the, doing uh, you know same two or three people the owner and whatever building out those experiences right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But as you get bigger and bigger and bigger recruiting becomes his own arm and all they care about is well we brought this many people into our funnel uh, it's not the, all they care about, but you know what I mean? That's, that's what they get measured on. Yeah. As many people into the funnel, we got them to sign, you know, and agree, like we got them to, yes, I want to do an, to onboard. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm out, like hand them over to the onboarding team. Right. Yeah. And then the onboarding team picks up with completely different context mm -hmm. and picks that person up and starts working with them. Mm -hmm. okay? And each time we do that, each time we lose people. These are the big opportunities. If you, if, if a lot of companies will look at where they're losing reps, it's, I call it the sinew between mm -hmm. these little sections. And what's happening is uh, they are not tending to that person in a way to like, you are, you should be do the, doing the tending to them, not m relying on them to keep their attention, right? Mm -hmm. We should make it, we should make it where they're thinking less, right? Yeah. Um, don't make yeah. me think it's like a book about user experience. Um, but we really should not make them think as much as we do, except in training. Like when you're doing training, you do want them thinking, you do want them recalling what they learned and everything, yeah. but they shouldn't have to think about where they go. Right. Mm -hmm. um, or what's the next step or worrying like, okay, I got recruited, but I didn't hear anything about like where I need to go next to get onboarded. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and 
I see people losing, again, seeing companies losing reps between these. And especially because like the sale of keeping this person going and keeping them excited doesn't stop. Like I was just talking to the, uh, 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 a company where they're like, yeah, we, we recruited these reps, right? We, mm -hmm. uh, we got them signed and then they're not showing up for training. Like between that process, before we have our, our physical or like our virtual training, we're mm -hmm. losing reps because they talked to a friend and that friend nagged them out on the job or something like that. And then they leave. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and is that a problem with the recruiters? No, because the recruiter did their job. Is it really a problem of the onboarders? Not really. Yeah, and they never got to it. They never never got to work with them. So what happened, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, and so it's the it, we we lost some of attention, or we didn't tend to them and add more attention from them, or commitment, or belief to them, right? So if you mm -hmm. think of it like a bucket, a finite bucket um, of of attention, right? Yeah. Yeah. And think about like a movie. Um, even think about whomever is listening to this right now uh, is calculating: Should I continue listening to this right now? Mm -hmm. Right, I'm talking sure. about this before, but they're literally yeah. going like, "Ah, oh, should I turn this podcast off and go listen to another podcast, or should I go, you know, listen to some music or change my tune?" You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, we're constantly recalculating, and people are doing this all the time. Yeah. Um, in this world where we have so much information, so, um, I I'm tired of seeing it happen. I'm tired of seeing uh, people lose um, reps and people that would have done great in the opportunity. Um, stopping short just because they lost their, you know, attention to it. Right. Yeah. Like they lost their, they lost their interest. They lost their motivation or a lot of indecision was created. And then their the indecision creates fear. And then they say, this isn't for me. And then they leave. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. So um, opportunity wise, I just kind of wrote down um, very simply like the opportunities. I think companies that we work with, uh, the types of companies we work with um, have, okay? Less recruits lost. Um, uh, reps are getting through their onboarding more quickly. Um, you know, they're more motivated. They're committed to actually um, launching, okay? Mm -hmm. So there's a, a big difference between, uh, let's say you could go into, you know, the first week where they're actually going to do the job and, and they're like, yeah, I completed training. I, I got, or I completed onboarding. I, I separate onboarding and training out separately, but I completed all my onboarding. I got my shirt size in and my I not, you know, like my legal stuff in and my background check done and all that. And I filled out all the forms and I showed up, but I got kind of my arms crossed like this, like, is this legit? Right. Yeah. So that's, that's not the same as somebody showing up, like kind of already understands how this is going to go and they already got their information in and they're, they're attentive to what's next. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Big difference. Yeah. Um, so finishing training more quickly, um, getting them ready to, to, to uh, start the job. Uh, and then um, also there's an opportunity for have a, a tighter feedback loop with reps. And this is what I'll talk about with regards to combining, uh, combining different experiences, right? Like a training experience with a pulsing experience and being able to have, this doesn't make quite as much sense until I get down to explaining a little bit more. Mm -hmm. um, but those are the opportunities. Okay, so when you talk about the sinew and the drop between the different portions, uh, training, onboarding, uh, recruitment, onboarding, uh, and, and all this. Um, it makes me think, of, I, I like to use restaurants as examples because um, everybody goes to restaurants. So yeah. we, we have a really uh, our finger on the pulse of, of that experience. But, um, you know, it's, it's like when you go to a restaurant when uh, they've got the chalkboard up in the front and they have the specials listed on it. And then you sit down and you're like, man, that special sounded really great. You order it and the waiter's like yeah we're all out and you're like well doggone it erase the chalkboard then you know uh, we had that experience you and i had that recently um last month when we went out and they didn't have something that we were like oh that sounds great and um it, it seems like there's a drop off like th at least that sounds like what you're saying where the front end and the back end need to be talking uh likewise the recruiters and the onboarders the trainers the, the departments they need to be communicating uh and they need to button up that communication can you talk more about that yeah the yeah absolutely they need to button up because um i've said this before but really the only person that actually knows your entire experience is the rep yeah right and yeah. Um, because uh, everyone is working off their micro version of the map that for the map for their department. 
Mm -hmm. um, but they're not seeing how they, they connect to, to each other. Unless mm -hmm. somebody is doing a really, really good job um, mapping out the entire journey. And we've talked about this before in other episodes, like map your entire rep journey, have yeah. it somewhere where everybody can look at it and be like, here's where there's people dropping off, have mm -hmm. analytics around it. I'm really big on this. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why I feel like I want, like I'm qualified to talk about this because we're seeing this play out right now in the solar boom. We're seeing companies that have some really top talent in you know, the CRO space um, or, or head of VP or whatever, uh, VP of sales. And there, there are some that really, really get this and are, are crushing it because they're treating it more like a consumer experience yeah. and holistic. Um, and they're just at that right point where they have scale, but they're small enough to make these decisions and put them in place early. Mm -hmm. And then there are even big companies where uh, they've got smart people, but it's just so big. It's really hard to move those things. So like, you know, if you're, if you're recruiting 50,000 reps in a year, like one of our customers um, it's very difficult to make a lot of ch you know, changes. Um, yeah. But it's unfortunate because if you do this right and you get it right, uh, it creates um, what I like to do. It reduces back pressure on all of your managers, right? There's another topic around the benefits of, of doing this um, for yeah. uh, your people is your managers are dealing with, uh, the coaxing that it is to get people to finish training, the coaxing that it is to get them to you know finish onboarding or go through the recruiting process, yeah. And all of that leads to what I call back pressure, which is essentially um, your managers like having to grow into painful experiences. You don't want your man your middle level managers growing into painful experiences. Mm -hmm. You want them like actually excited. You want actually there to be a deficit between their pain and their desire to grow, right? Um, not like pain's up here and growth is down here. You know what I mean? Um, and yeah. it's just, and, and so you can't rely on them, you know, to, to take, to take that in place. So um, basically you're talking about restaurants. So let's talk about like experiences, right? We should be modeling. Um, you should be modeling your rep experience similar to some of your best consumer experiences you've ever had. So I'll give you an example of one. Um, there's this tool or this product called founder shield. So founder shield is just business insurance. Um, and this smart agency come, came along and like digitized um, the and consumerized the experience of getting business insurance, which is like a totally boring, stodgy um, mm -hmm. process, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and I've always hated it. And they essentially um, kind of like TurboTax, the process of going, if you think TurboTax is better, they have an amazing experience. They made a linear experience out of asking a whole bunch of really annoying questions. <laughs> they helped me see where, how, how far through the process was. I think at one point I stopped in the process and they nudged me like to get mm -hmm. back in there and finish the process. Um, they were really clear with what I needed to give them. Okay. I didn't have to think about it. Like I just followed the instructions I follow. And, and I, I could, I could have had a couple beers or, you know, been kind of, uh, a little bit, um, tipsy and gotten through it. Right. Yeah. Um, simple. Yeah. It's very simple. And, um, it was a complicated task to get all the business information to get the, the insurance, but they made it simple, right. They didn't, they, uh, didn't make it, uh, they didn't leave any assumptions. There, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then on top of that, once I got my quotes, the quote showed up and then I got a message. It was just like, it was like, this is how everything should be. Like, you know, yeah. I ever those experiences like, can't we just make other things like this, like this experience? I mean, another one that we all know is Uber, like the Uber, the, when we first had our first Uber experience, we're like, what the, like, this was <laughs> awesome. Why, you know, like, why can't we have experiences like this all the time? Yeah. Um, and it's hard to do sometimes, you know, like technically, uh, but there are, there are things that you can do to like, we'll, we'll talk about, um, to get more of an experience like that. Mm -hmm. So you said you had an example as well. Yeah. Uh, so I think of maybe two examples. I, I think of one example where, um, you know, consumer experience of something that you don't like. And then also the other, which is, I'll go back to a restaurant, which I'll talk about that in a second, but, um, you know, consumer experience that you don't like. That's that's kind of how I'm approaching this because when you think about the the process of onboarding reps, they really they really aren't signing up to be onboarded or to go through training. They really want to get on the job. So yeah. it's kind of one of those you have to do it. You don't. It's not like you get to do it. Yay, we get to onboard. Nobody's really like that. Yeah. It's like it's more so we have to do this in order to to get people out into the field. So yeah. when I think of of um, 
experiences that I don't like, I think of stuff like ordering new contacts or uh, ordering new tires, getting new tires. And, and in both of those instances, um, they tell you up front what's going to happen. And, and they try to make this a seamless process. So I'm thinking of, you know, 1-800-CONTACTS and I'm thinking of, of discount tires. You know, they tell you it's going to take this amount of time. It's going to be this. They're also uh, reaching out to you saying, hey, uh, you should be changing your tires or you should be getting new contacts. They know that information. So they're surfacing just at the right yeah. time. Uh, when you when you uh, go in to get new tires, they tell you, hey, it's going to take X amount of time and this is the process that we're going to do. So they give you the opportunity to uh, to to leave and come back if you want to to yeah. um, you know uh, whatever it is that you need to do when you're getting getting uh, that done. So I, I think on the one hand, telling people what the process is helps to make it feel more seamless. Yeah. Uh, but then you know, on a restaurant, when you think about uh, going someplace to eat, when they ask you good questions, yeah. when, when you have a server who's who's uh, uh, first like when the hostess or the host, you know, they transfer you to the waiter if they if they've got just a seamless process there, you know, you're going to be, hey, your, your waiter's going to be with you here in just a second. And no sooner do they walk away than your waiter's there greeting you, talking to you, um, asking you questions about what it is you want to drink, what it is you want to eat. And if you're like, well, no, I don't drink, then, you know, they, they know immediately what to do from that point. They're going to ask you about what kind of meal are you looking for? Are you looking for something heavy? You want something light? You know, they want to tell you about the specials. They ask good questions uh, to make the process an enjoyable process. So um, I think asking good questions, uh, making things seamless, and uh, communicating clearly uh, what it is that you're trying to do. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, asking questions is another example of garnering attention. Yeah. Right. Because people want to hear, people want to talk, people want to, you know, engage about them. They want to share about themselves. It's always easier to do that. Um, so, kind of tip two is like look for ways to reduce the attention needed and uh, increase the attention level. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, attention needed things like reading lo like blocks of text. We were talking about that in, in training. You've seen this, right? Like, dude, yeah. this course. Yeah. So the, one of the things that ends up happening is that people create content and they uh, sometimes will use text just tons and tons and tons of text yeah. and the, the learner is just scrolling 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 through all this and we we encourage people not to to do that you you, sh you should use text there's a time to use text and I, I know you can talk about that but um you know when you think of of uh, if they're engaging if they're consuming um your material your content on their phones uh text can be something where uh, as soon as somebody gets a um so, uh, a, a, a text message from somebody else and when I say text, I mean like articles, like you're, you're giving them articles to read. As, as soon as they get a text from a friend, they, they kind of check out and yeah. they may, may not come back to reading that full article. Um, and so we try to live by and encourage this, the, the mantra, and I don't remember where we, we came across it, but this idea that video is king, that uh, if you can take your content and present it to your learners in a, in a way that they're already using on their phone, um, you know, and, and uh, again, not that text is bad, but if if they're you know primarily consuming social media on their phone then it's it's likely in the form of uh, graphics or videos so uh, it makes sense to present in that same kind of manner instead of making them or asking them to scroll through and scroll through and scroll through just you have to ask the question how, how often do you sit and read tons and tons of of articles on your phone yeah those for that and and even if it has to be text like at least break it up like break yeah. it up from I'm expecting you to read for 10 minutes or two. Like I'm expecting you to read for one or two minutes and I'm going to ask you a quick question yeah, for sure, uh, engage with you and then go to the next section. So always be looking for ways like, uh, you know, that have you ever heard of that? Like you're either moving away from your goal or towards your goal, right? Well, yeah. like look through your, 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 your requests. And are you saying, am I spending attention or creating attention yeah. as uh, through all of my processes, right? Yeah. Um, where, and really watch out for when you start to dip below like a baseline. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like yeah. Uh, an example of one I, I think I'm gonna, I am know happens is you recruit a rep, they're excited, okay? You have a, a great talented person to hop on the phone with them and, and recruit them. And then you're like, great, let's onboard you. And then you get them on the onboarding sequence. And then there is zero, um, zero work done to keep them hot, like to keep them interested. And you're like, okay, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna launch. And so now we're gonna go through the process of getting like 
your social, your blood type and your social security number and your like, like all this stuff. And there is zero like, like intermission to be like, hey, by the way, here's how our competitions work. And people are learning, like winning all this sorts of stuff. By the way, what's your shirt size? You see what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. But it's, it's, it's in, not intermixing the, the attention creation and you're expecting just spending all of that attention down right yeah to, to a zero level so it's just really thinking about it like a thermometer or thinking like a like a bottle and you're filling yeah. it up and and, and, and uh, ripping it down every once in a while or pouring it out yeah so so this is really the biggest thing i wanted to talk about in our conversation which was this idea of um blurring the lines between requirements okay and finding ways to combine interactions that are different types of interactions. So a lot of companies will treat these different types of interactions or different jobs to be done as separate little things on the back end. And then they, sh they show up to the rep like little tiny movies. It's like separate movies, right? Rather mm -hmm. than one big movie. Mm -hmm. And so the rep doesn't care if you have a recruiting department or a onboarding department or an HR group, or they don't care about any of that stuff. What they care about is what they're experiencing. And so um, here's some what ifs. What if the place where you recruited the rep is also, and, and where you sent them to watch the opportunity video was also the same place that they're going to do training, right? Where they've already been onboarded into the thing that they'll end up using to uh, do the rest of onboarding and the rest yeah. of, of training, right? Right yeah. there in the recruiting experience, yeah. rather than like, oh, you did this recruiting app over here and filled out your, your application here. And then you went over here and it's just like one of these things, like you're just going like this, right? Yeah. Um, what do so, I have to download? What do I have to, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And then what if a rep watches a belief building video, um, a little micro while, uh, while he's filling out some onboarding information? Right. So you do a little quick little here's, you know, Sally and how she did in the job. Right. Mm -hmm. um, after And here's how what she did right after onboarding. OK, a mm -hmm. um, little testimony. Video. Oh, and then, by the way, we need this from you and this from you. Mm -hmm. And you spread out onboarding um, as part of your training. So you're blurring the lines between those two um, you know, sections. And uh, one thing that's also a, a byproduct investment in that is that people want to be congruent with the time investment that they made. Right. And so um, if, if you're just doing onboarding by itself, then like I said, like they're making that risk reward calculation while they're onboarding and they're like, well, I haven't learned anything about the job or how I'm going to do this or what it's going to be like. And this is boring. So I'm done, you know? Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. and, and you might be thinking in the back of your mind, like some of the, like the more rugged salespeople are being like, well, if they can't finish that and they can't have enough attention to do this, then I don't want them. You know, like something like yeah. that. I, I hate that because you're assuming that the reason why they're noping out, you know, from your process is because they're not capable. It's because they got three other opportunities like at their doorstep. Yeah. In in one of the hardest recruiting, you know, climates for especially for independent contractor type of roles. Yeah. In a long time. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And so you got to change that mindset from being like, well, it's a barrier for a reason you mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. Uh, and be like, no, if they don't sell, they don't sell. But if you build the right systems, who, who cares? Right. Uh, yeah. at, least, at least you got them through the process. So um, another one, another one of blurring the lines um, is while you're doing a little bit of training, you also ask them a quick little, how's it going in the field question? Like a, a, a stats tracker question on a scale from one to 10, how well are you using the new approach that we rolled out? Um, how's that going for you? How do you feel about it? Um, um, a poll on what's the most challenging thing in this, in this new location we're checking out, right? Um, whatever. But usually people will do engagement in another tool like SurveyMonkey or yep. um, you know, do those surveys over there and they'll do them later and then again, that's another thing that you're asking people to divide their attention on and go do mm -hmm. that over there mm -hmm. versus doing it in line. I think of it in line as one nice experience. Another way to think about this is like stories, like Facebook stories or something, mm -hmm. where the reason why they pulled that out is for engagement, right? So instead of having to scroll through like 900 posts, it was just like a dot, 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 like just, you just click, click, click. And you're going through these nice little videos and it's kind of a roll up of everything that's changed since you've been there last. Yeah. Right. And yeah. So it's easy for people to engage with. 
So, so this makes me think of, of the fact that like we know that this is something that's out there. We 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 have a belief that there's really something uh, that's more than just a concept. And and so I know we have an example, which would be uh, um, you know the old school Batman when uh, he and Robin they jump on the pole, and by the time they get down to the bottom, they're dressed right. Yeah. <laughs> or, or like uh, Iron Man will come flying in. He lands, and as soon as he lands, the the system is taking off all of his armor. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a, we we think that there are these times and these places out there where um, where the process of equipping you is also the process that outfits you. Yeah. And so we're doing multiple things at once. We we know it exists. It just feels nebulous, you know. And and um, you know maybe even the fact that I'm using these two examples kind of shows it. Like it's there's just not not quite on the nose in in certain places. But yeah. if um, if we can double up, blur the lines like you're talking about, you actually you know. Uh, the expression kill two birds with one stone i wish there was a way to like have like a measurement meter where you could just watch attention go up and down you know what I mean? yeah yeah and see the dips see the other the other thing is well a lot of companies solve this through hyper messaging so the, yeah. the way they do it is like well i'm going to get their attention back because i'm mean, just we're every department's going to hammer them with different messaging and this becomes an even bigger problem than no messaging or, or lack of engagement because you overwhelm them OK, you're mm -hmm. asking them to have another level of attention. So there's attention in you're asking them to figure out what to do next. Yeah. On top. Like, so if you're given three tasks in training and three tasks in onboarding. You're now asking the rep to hold that in their head and be like, what am I supposed to do first? Yeah. Right. Um, do I go do the training? Can I maybe I can just do the training first. Then I can do some of these questions for sure. Um, and the best thing that you can do is create uh, an experience that's linear. Okay. As much mm -hmm. as possible mm -hmm. uh, and keep the attention on one thing at a time mm -hmm. while giving them enough understanding of what they're headed to. We've mm -hmm. talked about this before where they can be like, ah, you're going, you're, you're like, oh, uh, what are they? What's that saying? Um, um, bearing the lead, right? So you're bearing the lead. Like you're not, you're not telling me where I'm going or how this is going to play out. And so I'm kind of scared because you are taking me through a linear process, but you're losing my attention because I don't know what I'm going to be doing for the next three days or the next yeah. three months. Yeah. So the best is a nice little blend of making a very linear, this is what you do next experience, but then also doing a little bit like a, Hey, it's going to be okay. Here's all the things you're going to do just real quick. We're just going to tell you so you don't feel like you're going to get painted. In yeah. 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 Right? Yeah. Yeah. That, so, that, but I love, I love your, your thought, like the sliding down the pole and being equipped at the end. Yeah. Yeah. That's super cool. Uh, that's a really good, uh, good example. So call to action. All right. So this one, um, if you're a, you know, head of, head of recruiting, um, go through the, go be secret shopper for outside of your department. Right. So if you're head of recruiting or head of, of that, go do onboarding. Hmm. as a secret shopper, if you can, um, or have somebody, you know, meet with someone and have them go through your onboarding so that you can understand the onboarding experience. Right. Then if you're, in, if you're just an HR and you're all about onboarding reps and getting them, you know, set up into your systems, go do training, right. Or go through and, and learn about the training experience. Um, hmm. do some cross learning there. Okay. If you're BP, ask your people to do this because what they'll find is ways like, oh, we're asking for the same information or releasing things out that we thought we covered that they understood. Um, and you'll find the deficiencies either in terms of repeating yourself, like I said, repeating yourself. I just said, it. I just repeated myself. Yeah. Um, and is, it, is and it like repeating yourself? Yeah, it's like repeating yourself. So if you find yourself repeating yourself um, and this is a, a, just an easy way to get more collaboration between your team. Uh, and then of course, there's the the bigger task, the bigger call to action, which is once everybody does that, like, let's just whiteboard it all out. Let's have a place where everybody can see their rep's journey mm -hmm. um, and look for the places where there's a uh, lack of attention or you're asking for too much attention, where are you going to have people drop off? So that's it. Um, that's the call to action. Another email you could send, um, a quick little action you could take if you're like a you know, CRO or head of customer rep experience, you could email each head of department and be like, just give me your Give me your process, like give me your bullets, your, you know, the, like the nine steps that go through your, your process. Okay. And mm -hmm. what has to be done for them to get to the next step. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And then once you get those from your people, look at uh, where they overlap, look at where there, some things could be intermixed together. 
Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and get some of that nice uh, double play, right? Because lastly, this isn't a call to action, but think about a day-to-day in a rep. Like if, if they, if they're doing another job while getting onboarded with you, right? Maybe they're, they're still working in another place. They're working eight hours there, or maybe they're, they're looking at multiple opportunities at the same time. Right. Yeah. Um, and so really how much time do you have? Do you have three 30 minute time frames with them in a day? No, you probably have like a 15 minute window or a 30 minute window at the end of the day or in the morning of the day, you know, morning, um, to pack in anything you need to get done. Mm-hmm. Uh, so if you can compact it and make it effortful and make it uh, short, but it gets, it hits all the right notes for where they are in the process, then you win. Mm-hmm. Right? That's how you win. So that's it. <laughs>